Rudolf Atala is a senior fellow at the Atlantic Council. He spent more than six years as Africa Counterterrorism Director at the Pentagon. He's also a former pilot in the United States Air Force. Rudolf Atala, thank you very much indeed for joining us from Washington. So the French defense minister says in and out, couple of weeks, all over. Should we believe him? That's going to be a, a tough one to, uh, to, to deal with. I mean, uh, you know, the, France has basically taken a, a major forward step in, into this battle. And uh, uh, right now, the Islamists, as of yesterday, have, uh, have already called France out on that. So uh, that's why you have the heightened security everywhere. There, there are many things that have not been considered as we move forward from here. And uh, hopefully, uh, you know, cooler heads will, will prevail to, to think about them. The thing is, this is not al-Qaeda in Afghanistan, is it? This is, uh, what, the MNLA Tuareg rebels, who are very much domestic-based. This is also Ansar Dean linked to al-Qaeda, plus a few other rebel groups. France is clearly hoping that a few military attacks and this rebel alliance will just disintegrate. What do you think? Well, first, let me, let me delineate, because MNLA has no association with Ansar Dean. Uh, or AQIM or Mujah or all the other Islam Islamists. MNLA is clearly a secular movement. Uh, it's predominantly, their, their focus is on grievances that have not been dealt with since Mali's independence in the 1960s. So all they want is autonomy and, and, and just live in a, in a secular environment in the north. Unfortunately, the previous president uh, allowed that the, the you know, GSPC, which later on became AQIM, to roam freely in the north and also allowed narco te terrorism to grow, which is something that the MNLA or predominantly Tuareg did not want. On the Islamist side, there's only one group, Ansar Adin, that's headed by a guy named Iyad Aghali, who is a Tuareg, but that's, he's a minority. And by all intents and purposes, Iyad and Ansar Adin is, they're, they're terrorists. They are 100% in the AQIM camp. So uh, what France is doing uh, it's great that they took a forward step, but there's several things that, that have not been considered. You're, you cannot break the back of these guys uh, in an air campaign within two weeks. It's just, it's not realistic. Um, th there will be an insurgency uh, by, by the Islamists. Uh, things to consider, Islamists have been training child soldiers. Uh, they've threatened to attack the capitals of all the countries that will, will send forces as an intervention force. Um, and, you know, they've trenched themselves outside of the main cities of Gao, Kidal, uh, Timbuktu. So, you know, hitting them here and there, yeah, that will cause a little bit of damage. But in the long run, they're not going to break their back. How concerned are you that that desert in the north, uh, in the north of Mali, will start to be used as a training camp, as a base for Ansar Dean and for other al-Qaeda sympathizers, just the way Osama bin Laden and al-Qaeda used Afghanistan? Believe it or not, that boat has already sailed. Uh, that ship has already sailed. That that happened years ago. They've already had uh, some uh, training camps in the north, um, and uh, and they continue. In fact, uh, in, you know, for for folks who are interested, go on YouTube and even see some of these uh, some of the advertisements that AQIM and Ansar Adin have already uh, showed uh, their training camps and what they've been doing. So yes, it is a safe haven, and and believe it or not, if we don't deal with it the right way, it's gonna it's gonna make matters worse. And I, I'm I've always been concerned about this. I've been concerned about this since 2006 and even before. Mali geographically is twice as large as Afghanistan. How much assistance is France going to need? Is it going to need other Western powers to come in with troops? Is it going to need the African Union to come in there and start fighting? Well, yeah, troop-wise, uh, absolutely, you're, you're correct on that. Um, it, it is a vast, vast space. This is why it's so important that, you know, grievances with the MNLA need to be dealt with up front. And the MNLA want the Islamists out of that area. So what you want to do is take indigenous people who are from who want to push out these 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 forces these islamists out of the way, out of the way and integrate them into a coalition force when you retake the north first of all i haven't seen anybody step up to the plate and really offer up a significant amount of money for this campaign this is this is not a peacekeeping operation this is an intervention operation which is going to be very very costly and in in terms of numbers it, it it's going to require far more than the 3300 that they've initially talked about
Rudolf Atala, thank you very much for that analysis. We appreciate it.